right. Well, thank you, um, Tim, and thank you, High Commissioner, and thank you, Ralph, for those very inspiring words. Um, but there are two problems about the Commonwealth family and the Commonwealth network. The first, as I see it, is that uh, there is a very wide perception, uh, particularly in the media, not universal, but in most parts of the media, and in the public mind possibly, that the Commonwealth is all about relations between governments and officialdom, and uh, possibly some diplomacy, but um, issues that they can see are visible above the waterline. In fact, of course, we all know that, like the iceberg, that's just the tip. Beneath lies the most intense, dense, and amazing network of linkages between the professions, the lobbies, the interests, the uh, educational field, the scientific field, business, parliamentarians, um, every, every aspect of medicine, every aspect of education, schools, and so on. The list goes on forever. In fact, if you look on the, if you go to Wikipedia and start looking at the a number of accredited, accredited Commonwealth uh, organizations, you will simply run out of counting time. They are almost endless. So there is a problem that the, the world doesn't understand what has happened, which is that with this a fantastic network of peoples, the whole system, of course, has been vastly enlivened by the arrival of connectivity, hyper-connectivity, total informational exchange, rapid, continuous, daily, hourly, and most of it in our common language. Once that is understood, it will be realized that we're sitting here, not so much at the hub, we're no longer the center, it's a network, and networks don't have centers, but we're sitting in the midst of the most fantastic network of linkages and opportunities, if I may speak, for, for our own country, that the world has ever seen. And I think many of our neighbors sit around absolutely amazed that we don't make 10 times more of the lucky legacy which we have. I say lucky legacy because, frankly, for the last 40 years, Britain has not been a very good member of the Commonwealth. Our policymakers advised us to turn elsewhere. They said Britain is finished. So it says we're a tiny little bit of the world when they would turn our back on all global links and the great markets are here in our neighborhood. Our neighborhood is still important. We are very important parts of the European system. But uh, the wheel has turned. The great new markets turn out to be elsewhere. The great new markets turn out to be beyond in uh, Asia, in rising Asia, Central Asia, Pacific Asia, and in the Antipodes, and in Latin America, and above all, or increasingly so in Africa, as Ralph right, and uh, Tim rightly mentioned. So that's the first problem, that someone has to get through to uh, a world that doesn't want to really hear it yet, that the information revolution has been like a gigantic blood transfusion sending through the arteries of the Commonwealth the most amazing reinvigoration and bringing together peoples with an intensity that simply has never existed before in human history. Uh, the second problem is that there is a lack of facts and figures and understanding of what is actually going on. I think it was, I'm not necessarily the greatest fan of everything that uh, Lord Keynes said, but he said his real quarrel was not with other economists, it was with those who simply refused to understand what was actually going on and just carried on as though, although it was right under their nose, it didn't exist. And what is actually going on in the Commonwealth is staggering. You've heard a little bit of it from the High Commissioner and from Tim and from Ralph, but there is much, much more. It is an amazing story of expanding trade and investment and capital flows, crisscrossing and cross-pollinating the entire globe. We hope a lot of it through London. We'll do our best to join in with this, but not necessarily through London. It is the network par excellence, the soft power network par excellence, that we would be crazy to ignore, although I'm afraid we haven't given enough attention to it. Well, um, these two brilliant young men and their supporters have asked me to be their chairman, and I have agreed, not passionately, Tim, but absolutely <laughs> coolly, <laughs> coolly, coolly and open. Because I see a great new page turning in this country's history. I see a sort of new phase emerging. As we continue, we must be good Europeans. God put us in Europe. It is our neighborhood and our village. But as we realize that beyond Europe, beyond Europe, beyond in the great new markets lie all the opportunities. And the Commonwealth is both itself 
a fantastic panoply of new markets, itself a fantastic group of networks to the many poorer countries struggling to develop, but also, of course, a gateway to the still equally great markets outside the Commonwealth and neighboring it. It is the opportunity. So I've said I'll chair this. Of course, I'm thrilled to do so, and I'm going to need a lot of help from people, I hope, here and uh, elsewhere. We're all going to need help in getting together a good team of people, and we're going to, we've got Tim and Ralph who will now bring the facts and the figures in front of the British public as never before. And this is a mighty cause. It's good for Britain. It's good for the Commonwealth Network. It's good for peace and stability throughout the whole of this very troubled planet. And I hope you will give it your very full support. Yeah. Then. Just 34 seconds for me. I uh, just want to thank everyone for listening patiently to our speakers. Um, hopefully you've got a better idea of what CX is actually about. But importantly, we believe we can add value to the Commonwealth. But we also want to build new relationships with non-Commonwealth partners, be it in business or in education or in defence. So I just want to say a few thank yous to our growing number of people on our advisory board. Notably, uh, Lord Flight for his recent article on Conhome, so thank you very much. Um, also to Andrew Sharp of Sharp and Lancaster, and also Andrew Monk, the CEO of VSA Capital. But I'd like to add and extend to this membership here this evening. So if you would like, if you're interested in investing in CX through time, money, expertise, or seed capital, and wish to support and sponsor our projects further, then please do speak to Ralph and ourselves. We are very much approachable people. If you have to dash, then please uh, feel free to put your business card in the fish bowl outside, and we'll contact you afterwards. Now, without further ado, I'm going for a large glass of Commonwealth red wine. So, mingle, sit back, and relax, and thank you, and enjoy this evening. Thank you.